Yo, what's up? This is The Edge. Once again, we're on the Create a Life podcast. And today, I got one of my good friends, a special guest, Frank Walker. You know, he's one of the best stories never told. You know, a lot of guys play in the NFL. A lot of guys go through that journey. And you always hear about the bad side. Or you hear about the things that people don't do or haven't been able to accomplish that they've been able to achieve the highest of the high in the football field or the football uh, community, but Frank's been able to sustain, maintain, and still do his thing out here as an entrepreneur. You know, he used football as a stepping stone to get him to the next level, and I think it's inspirational. I think it's motivational for a lot of the younger guys because everybody's not going to be a superstar. Everybody's not going to make a lot of money, but during that time, what you do with it, and on the Creative Life podcast, you know, we based on the mindset, self-mastery, financial freedom, community networking, and lifestyle leisure. Within those five pillars, you know, we always like to bring somebody here that can actually motivate, inspire, and uplift somebody else. And today we got Frank Walker, one of my good friends that is an example of what it's like to go there, do what you gotta do when you get there, but also take advantage of the situation and make life better for you because so many guys come through and they have an opportunity to play the game, but it usually ends, you know, with a sad story or people end up looking down on you. But Frank's been able to sustain. And for me, you know, that that's a big thing because, you know, you're always telling guys about the pitfalls of being an NFL player. You have all these expectations. You're thinking about all this money that's made, but the reality of it is, it's not what you think. And Frank's a living testimonial to everything that I just said. Frank, appreciate you coming on Create Life Podcast. And, you know, we're here to let you actually inspire some others to actually do what you got to do to get where you want. Because your road is not the normal road or it's not the road that a lot of people have traveled and were able to sustain. So... With that being said, you know, like what separates you from all the other guys? You're in a locker room and you played on four different teams. You played for nine years. What separates you from all those guys that have played the game? The biggest thing for me, I would say, would be work ethic. Um, I've always had my foot on the ground as far as like every day, finding something to get better at. And also just thinking about like, for me, it was like, like I wasn't the only person depending on me. You get, see what I'm saying? Like my whole town was depending on me. The whole town of Tus- Montgomery, Tuskegee, Tuskegee, yeah. Montgomery. Yeah. Which way? Tuskegee, Tuskegee or Montgomery? I'm Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Yeah. So the whole city was depending mm-hmm. on me. So man, like I, I enjoyed the pressure. I enjoyed like the way people smile when I came home. I enjoyed people really enjoying being able to say, "Hey, that's a product of our environment." So it's bigger than yourself. Oh man, for sure. You know, but you went into it. You know, a lot of times it's, it's about self. But you went into it with, I'm gonna take Tuskegee and put it on my back. Or so how from, many guys came from Tuskegee actually before you? Um, so Anthony Mitchell came. He um, he won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. Um, I think in like 2000 or something like that. Um, then we had Drayton Florence. He came out with me. He went to the Chargers. He was the first rounder. Second round. Second round. Yeah. Played for the Chargers. Yeah, Played for the Chargers. Yeah. And Demetri Patterson, he came out and he went to the Dolphins. I think he went as a free agent. So you had this Tuskegee on your back, but going into it, you know, like you, you got all these guys that play the game. So you went into it just like, hey, I'm going to represent for Tuskegee. Well, so when I, when I went in, it's just like, you know, of course it's about mama off the rip. Yeah. So, Most guys yeah. come from single parent homes. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. So like I came from a single parent home and yeah, like, the, the best thing is, the biggest thing was offering a better quality of living for my mom, you know? So, like, with that being said, like, it was an easy thing for me. When I went to training camp, I bought every piece of clothes I had. they like, bro, you bought too many clothes? I said, I ain't going back home. Oh, so you made it, made it clear. Like, you here, like, it's Man, no plan B. This it. <laughs> <laughs> this it. So, tell me, okay, go back to your draft. Where were you drafted? or how, What was that process like? Going Like, coming from an HBCU, like, I had a son that's at the HBCU. And you have so many guys that go to an HBCU, and the road is a little bit 
difficult. It's, it's, it, that's not easy. I went to a PWI. When they say, when they say a PWI is a predominantly white institution, you know, so when you hear the word PWI, you know, that's what a lot of people are referring to for the people that don't know when somebody said PWI. But you went to an HBCU. That's, that's, that's not easy. So, like, we miss all the perks. So every perk you think you had at the PWI, like, we don't have it. Like, I got one pair of cleats for the whole season. The whole season? The whole season. <laughs> Everything else after that is funded by mama, like, being straight up, or by me. Like, more than likely by me, but, like, as far as, like, the school goes back then, like, man, it was, like, bare minimum. Like, the football field was, like, So why, why, why go to an HBCU if you know you got to go through all that? How many options you had? So coming out, I had 33 offers, but, like, only one offered my mom to be able to see every game. Oh, like, so you made it based upon everything was based upon the game. Mom. Yeah, everything. Like that was my everything. Still is, you know. So for me, like I based it on mama. Like I wanted my mama, and I was a ball boy at Tuskegee. So I was a ball boy there from when I was five it was years. Like you was rooted in Tuskegee. That's what I'm telling you. So, so you really didn't have no choice. From five years old all the way up, like Tuskegee. My daddy was a track coach at Tuskegee. You know, I never knew about Tuskegee. All I knew about the. Um, Tuskegee. Airmen. No, the experiment. The simplest, the simplest, simplest experiment. Yeah, That's for all, sure. You know, you have to look that up. That's like, it's some. Um, they just did another experiment. COVID. It's, it's, but the Tuskegee <laughs> was the one that stood out. That's, that's, that's when I learned about Tuskegee until I until we linked up and I yeah. went to yeah. went to, to Tuskegee with you. Oh, yeah. They love you down there, boy. Yeah, no. Was, <laughs> you took me to the Rose. Anybody know about what, yeah, the, Rose. The, the Rose? The I was gun. at the Rose. I went to the Rose. But no, nah, that's that's pretty interesting. But I can kind of see why you went to Tuskegee. But knowing that you know, as a person that's trying to get to the NFL, and knowing that the track record of people getting to the NFL, it wasn't an easy road. You know that that says a lot about you as a person to make that decision to say, I'm gonna get to the NFL. Or did you go there saying, I know I'm gonna get to the NFL, or it just happened that way. So my senior year in high school, um, I was very intelligent, and I got accepted to a math and science program, uh, accelerated math and science program that summer. And so I won the program, top performer there, and we had to do a, we had to do a, um, we had to do a, a presentation on what we want to be, and like and you said every, football player. That's it. That's nothing, all you want to be. I'm talking about nothing else. So when I went to college, I remember like yesterday. You got to be intelligent and say, okay, I want to be a football player, but I'm going to go where no football players go to go to the NFL. Because it's not, to me, it's not predicated on where you're at. It's predicated on what you do. So well, I'm, You got to say that you gotta say again, because a lot of times these kids, you know, they pick to go to these schools, and they're, they, they're actually willing to be a backup to go to a bigger name school when you know and I know from actually being and experiencing it that – it doesn't matter if you went to this school or that school. It's a matter if you can ball, if you got that it factor. You got to have it in you, man. Like, that's the biggest thing I tell people all the time. Like, so first day of college for me, man, like, I literally went in my dorm, I said a prayer to God, and the only thing I said, hey, God, listen, I don't drink or smoke. If I keep that through college, let me go to the league. Still don't drink or smoke. Still don't drink or smoke. How you keep that discipline? It, like, you can't miss what you ain't never had, honestly. So for me, and then, you know, as I got older, I got more interested in the money that those things make. Right. So, like, as I got interested in money, like, you know, I, I ain't never had it. Like, I don't need to start now. Yeah. But for me, like, that was the biggest thing. And then, like, from there, it was just straight grind. Like, if I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and everybody else sleep, I go work out. Like, by myself at the football field, jet black, can't see nothing at Tuskegee because we still don't have lights on our field to this day. Damn. It ain't even a light to walk down to. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> uh, like driving, bro. But you know, like it's like like for me, like like I like that grit. I like that grind in a person. You know, like even post football, those are the people you want to get in business with. Those are the people you want to actually walk that walk with because you know they willing to do the things that everybody else not willing to do. And for you, you've been doing that all the way from high school to Skeegee and you was able to wheel your way to the NFL. And to get nine years, because the average NFL player, wait, that's three, four years? I think it's like three. Two, they got like 2.7 or something Oh, like it don't went down. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> they chopped like, to make nine years, that says a lot about you as a person, especially where you're coming from. 
But you wish more kids or more, wish more younger people had that grit. And then nowadays you fast forward to, it's totally different. It's totally different. But when you see somebody like yourself, you know, what are some of the things that, or can you, can you notice in these kids, can you, do you notice uh, Frank Walker? Do you, can you see it in them from just being around them? Yeah. You, you can pretty much see, like, a kid, like, who really got the pedal to the metal. Like, he's picking his reps. Okay, that's the best receiver. Let me go against him. Like, he don't want to see nobody else. When practice over with, he going to get him a few gases in. Like, just because everybody left. Like, I would literally, like, if it's raining outside, I go work out. Like, man, I know these niggas in the house right now. Right. I know they ain't working out right now. That was my whole mentality, just to get one but up you're on talking about, But you're talking about... So you was already thinking NFL while you there? At the HBC, you, you thinking about, I'm going to get to the next level. Man, that's the only thing that was on my mind. When, when, when you asked me why I'm in college, man, like, I'm here for football. Like, that was my answer. And I was very intense. That's a real football player. They, and they I was, hold everything. Yeah, did, you, and did, I was, you, um, did you base your whole schedule around football? Man, I, told, I don't care what they put on the schedule. Because if it's football practice or class, I'm going to practice. <laughs> like, that's, what, that's what you need. Like, like me... Me when I went school to school, always there. Right? Yeah, that, that that was my mind. Yeah. I, I based my whole everything around my football schedule. I'm talking about my whole life was football, and you know, of course, it paid off. But that's things that I don't see in a lot of these younger kids nowadays. You know, like they have other priorities, but they have more distractions. But that's still no excuse. But you know, the ones that base everything about the main thing, you just see them. Moving a little bit far, they reap the benefits. Yeah, and they I see, and I see that in you. I see that a lot. That was like even even today when like like even while we're doing business together, even while we're actually even having conversations, you can see it in the conversations. You can see it in the actions. Cause you know I've seen you. You know, you know everybody. Frank he he does some everything, but Frank actually get out in the field and actually do the work, and that goes back to those roots. You know. Where did that come from? Did it come from mama? Did it come from your uncle? Or did it come from, mom, where did it come from? My mom's a hard worker. But like, my mom was a very hard worker. I remember my mom working three jobs for forever when I was coming up through high school. And it was, the third job was strictly for me to be able to have school clothes. Mm. Like, and so I'm seeing stuff like that. And then I had a, a coach by the name of Coach Shaka. And he was so far ahead of his time, rest in peace, he died from cancer. But, like, he instilled in me at a young age, like, nobody is better than you. Like, I would come to his house by myself, and it's supposed to be 20 kids out there. He'd be, he'd be, like, he'd be like, Frank, ain't nobody with you. You're the only one showed up. I don't care what's going on, I'm going. Oh, but that's, but that's why you got to the NFL. Yeah, but know? I just, like, if you ain't going to do it right, just chill. Like you mess around, get hurt out there, beat up, like yeah, hurt for life. You know, like you know saying, man, football give you it. lifetime injuries, and a lot of times they don't take it serious. Man, and then like, not only that, like you got a name on the back of your jersey. You got to like, play for that Walker yeah, name for sure. Yeah, but that's that's pretty cool. Like like you know, going to an HBCU, knowing that you know it's the chances are slim, and to find that dog within you, or find everything within you. You know, that says a lot about you as a person, but did you realize that it was a bigger play behind it with what you're doing or you just doing it for self and for mama? Or did you say, nah, I'm doing this because you know, I'm going to be an example? So back then, it really was like, I didn't really have nobody that like kind of set the example for me or set the mold for me. So, so I, who, who, who was your, um, who's your idols? Growing up? Yeah, growing up, you had that like, I've always had somebody that I looked at and I seen they were doing this or I seen an example, you know, not in person or personally, but from afar, you know, like who were the people that gave you that hope, gave you that drive to say, hey, look, man, this is what I'm going to be like. This is how I'm going to make, because everybody got their favorites or their idols or they got, you know, people they look up to. Like who were they, who was that person or who was or who was in that group of people for you? So for me, like, as far as, like, football goes, like, I was just, like, I wasn't a big student of the game, but, like, because at Black College, like, we didn't, that wasn't a big thing back then. But what about in the NFL? I'm saying, like, y'all, if you grew up in Alabama and you go to Tuskegee, what's your NFL team? 
uh, Redskins growing the up. The Redskins? Redskins was my squad. How you, how you skip over the Falcons? Uh, I don't think Carolina. So my little league team, like growing up, I was in a small town. It was two teams. The Redskins and the Cowboys, we played e each other every single week. Oh, so you was already, already put in that rivalry. Yeah, so like every single week, it was Redskins against Cowboys. That's how small the town was. I played the exact same team every week. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lying. You every, played the same team every week. Every week, bro. Like y'all didn't, didn't, didn't travel? How? Within no the like within a little mile radius. Well, that costs money from Poe Town, bro. Oh, but now man. they got all that stuff going on now. But back then, you got to realize. So, like I tell, like when I'm speaking to kids about sports and stuff like that, I'm like, and even the parents, I got you got to realize your kid. Like when I was growing up, I was in competition with my friends and people around me. Now they're in competition with everybody on Instagram, mm -hmm. everybody on Facebook. Yeah, like, they get a check. They get yeah, a they got a range they, of people. Yeah, they got to try everybody. Oh. So for me, it's just like. Just, just <clears throat> when I talk to him, I'm just telling brother, like, just stay down. Like, whatever you chasing, bro, it's still there. I partied all night, every night in college. I but just, you ain't drink, so that don't really count as partying. You was just outside. Yeah, but how about this though? When I leave the club, everybody else go home, go to sleep. You ain't worked out. I go to the, I go right to the gym. You know, that's like I always worked out late night after the club. Like, for me personally, I found like it was so peaceful. And then I always had this thing about I'm getting an advantage over the next person. Exactly, bro. You know, where did how, how did you what was what was your thoughts or what did what made you say I'm gonna implement this into my game? So first of all, I was out late anyway, and then like our workouts would start with the team at six a.m. So I just figured if I get down there at four four thirty, I knock me out one, ahead. knock me out a workout before the team, and then. When they come, do they work out too? Coach be like, Frank, you good? We know you already worked out. Uh, nah, I want all of it. So you get one extra on everybody? Man, what? By the time four years come, I done doubled everybody up. So you did four years in college? Yeah, for so sure. you did the whole four. Mm -hmm. You know, like on the Create Life podcast, we like to talk about, you know, mindset is one of the five pillars. And one thing that I find in people that's actually doing things and going places, their mindset is a little bit different from the masses or from the groups. And when I look at you, I see your mindset is totally different from your peers and a lot of people that I've come across, especially when it comes to playing football. You know, what was the mindset of a Frank Walker in like greatness? Like if I say, okay, what does it take to be great? You've been around a lot of people, you played in the league nine years and the things you picked up over the years from some of the greatest players and greatest people you've been around no, if you had to sum it up, what makes the great great? To me, the greats are a sponge. Like, they take everything in. And when they take it in, like, they keep it in and they make it their own. So if I'm with the great Edron James, right, and I take a little bit from the great Edron James, and I'm with the Warren Sapp, and I take a little bit from him, like, even if it's just something small, like, even if it's something like, Plays like, hey, Frank, man, 80% of the time on third and two, like, we running the ball. Like, if I could just think about stuff like that, it makes me, like, one notch ahead of so it. So you think on another level. Yeah, you just got to you gotta take everything from everywhere. Like, even from, like, the type of field they play on. Like, if we're on turf or if we're on real grass, what plays do they like to run? Like, when they play on turf, what type of plays do they like to run on real grass? Like, I paid attention to every small detail. The details. The details. Once you get a hold of the smaller details, they're very tedious, tedious, but a bunch of small things make a big difference. So, for me, I never took nothing for granted. And that's what I learned from most of the greats, like, work ethics. Like, being with Strahan, I would watch Strahan, like, before and after practice, get on a mountain climb for an hour. Like, just do it. It's I, the little things that everybody else don't see. They don't never see it. Yeah. They don't never see it. And, like... I'm just going to get home an hour later than you, and I'm going to call you, and, and you still going to be doing the same. Bro, what we about to do? Hey, <laughs> I ain't missed out on nothing. The greats go, to, like, that's why I say the greats go the extra mile. They do the things that get them an advantage. It's pretty much like a cheat code. Yeah, they you go know, the like, extra two miles, three yeah. miles. They do whatever it takes. So when you look at that, when you, when you look at the greats, they always find, like, I always call it ways to cheat. It's like, it's legalized cheating, but it's the things that everybody else not willing to do. They're going to put in the extra time, the extra work, the extra hours in the film room 
that's what's going to separate them. But they realize a lot of time, you, know, you get some people, they sit up there and they watch film and they don't know what they're looking at and they feel like it's a waste of time. But you have to have that eye to know that these are the things that's going to take me to another level. And so switching gears from football, you know, a lot of people may not know. Me and Frank, we do business together. We are business partners in certain business ventures. But how do you take what you learn from football and from sports in general and you incorporate that in business? Because you've been successful in business. Like, what are the things you took from the sport and you say, I'm going to take these things from here and I'm going to incorporate these in business and this is why I'm going to be successful? So the biggest thing is team. Together, everyone achieves more. Team, you got it all together. You got the whole acronym together. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Just just think about it. Like, you can rush for all those yards without the offensive line. Yeah. It's the same thing in business, bro. Like, if you're missing pieces to the puzzle, I can promise you that the business is going to not, not be right. But a lot of people don't. Like, I always say, I say, man, if, if you get me a group of athletes that have played depending on other people and take their egos out of the way, I'll take them versus any business person and run a company up. See, but the only thing about, I'll be honest with most athletes, they don't want to do business till it's too late. I agree, but I'm saying if you get the right group. Oh, for sure. Right, because you've been, you've been already kind of molded to depend on people. In business, you got to depend on people. And, and, and not only depend, you have to be accountable. Held accountable. Held accountable, it's accountability thing. So like, if you hit me and say, hey Frank, like we got to make sure we get this done for that. Like, it don't even. It ain't even. I don't even think twice about it. I'm, all right, let me just go and knock this on out. Like, right. That's just the way it is. Like, so for me, like that's the biggest thing that translates over to football. Like, making everybody feel like they're an important key player. Like in the business. Right. Like you're just as important as me. And like, don't worry. Like you wiping off the counter. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna sweep the flow. Like it don't matter. It don't matter who business it is. Like for me, like I just want to make everybody feel like. We're all one nucleus. Can you, can you walk in a business and, and look at it and say, like, I can see why this is failing and I can see why they're successful? Are you, are you at that point in life? I can tell by, as soon as I walk through the door, I can tell by the first person I see, if you're a greeter, like, if your greeter don't have the right attitude, this business is not going to work. Right. Your greeter, like, your greeter has to be the most pleasant person that you have at your business. But a lot of people don't understand it. You got a lot of people that they, they, they think, I, 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 and as athletes, you know, I, I found it, like, it, it's kind of consistent. The team player, they understand the power of the team. But in business, once I enter the business world, I see a lot of I, 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 because they have a lot of people that's um, quote unquote beneath them or people they hired or brought in. But, you know, when you've been on good teams, you understand your role. And I've seen a lot of people fail in business because they don't understand their role or they don't want to accept their role. And those things, it actually kind of hurts the business in a sense because sometimes people are being successful, but they could have been even more successful if they would have done those things. I agree with you 100 percent. And but so when you when you seeing those things, like how do you how do you choose a business partner? How do you choose like okay, I know you're doing a lot of things or you're doing multiple things. Like how do you choose a business partner? and actually choose a business that you're actually gonna go into? So, as far as business partner go, the number one thing I don't do is you don't pick a business partner because they got money. Like, because like, mostly, Why? because that's probably, if he's not a grinder, that's all he got is money. So, so if he, you don't have no money, and you know, now, what are you gonna bring to the table? Exactly, so, so for me, like, you have to bring like expertise, like, you have to be intelligent. Like you have to be well-rounded. You have to be a good person more than anything. I don't want to do business with a scumbag. Like I want to deal with good people. As long but as how you, do you know the person is good? Like you get to know them. When that, like, but that's what I'm saying. Like business moves so fast. It moves fast. Take your time. Like how are you gonna get to know these people? Man, listen. If they rushing you, it's a good chance that it's about to be some BS anyway. Cause yeah, good, always. <laughs> that's one of my rules. Like. The con man moves with speed. Yeah, good good businesses take time because they have to be well thought out, well planned out, well everything. And also a good a good business model is willing to move on without you. You get the what system I'm, is in place. Yeah, they like they a good business model, like if 
if I come to you, like you're a friend of mine, if I come to you with business, like it's like, okay, EJ, this is what we got going on. But if you say, nah, Frank, I'm gonna hold off on that, and like, you know, I'm still gonna do the business because right. the business has a good model. Right. Like, so that's the biggest thing for me. Like, if you if we're gonna do business, if you bring a business to me, like, my first thing, the first question I'm gonna ask you is, bro, like, if this business is gonna do all this, like, what you calling me for? Like, you don't need me. What you like, what's the reason for me? And you gotta have a good reason for wanting me. You gotta have to know a little bit about my work ethic and things of that nature. Because if you just say, "Oh yeah, uh, bro, I just think you're a good fit," nah, you know. So you just you just cut out the business relationship, the business partnership, all based on even if the opportunity is good. Even if the opportunity is good, man, I don't even care. Like so I walk away. It down. I walk away from plenty of stuff that I know that was gonna do well just because it's not with good people. Because whatever, like whoever you do business with, you inherit everything that they have going on. No, I definitely agree. You know that my my um my accountant you say the um biggest downfall to a business is a partner. So you have to be careful with the partners you choose. And I've learned that lesson over the past so many years to where, you know, sometimes people act like they're a partner, but they're really not a partner. And when things are good, everybody's a partner. And when things get a little rough, that's when you know you get actually get a chance to really know the person, but it's hard to gauge the person or if a person is good or bad. That's the biggest challenge that well, I've found. Yeah, because when it's going good, you know like everybody happy. Everybody's going to be good. <laughs> everybody good, dude. But when it get a little shaky, a little rough, you know, like true colors come out. And that's with anything, we're in tight situations and games. Like that show you who going to bow up, like who going to hoe up. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. You know, one of the pillars that we have on – um, creative life is it talks about financial freedom. Financial freedom is very important, especially being a former NFL football player, knowing that the statistics show that 80% of players end up in financial hardships and only 20% end up being successful. And you're one of the guys that, you know, you figured it out. And for me, and I think a lot of people that's watching, you know, it's it's always, you know, you always wonder, like, how? How do people get in those situations? And what separates you from the 80%? Because that's, that's a high number, and I don't know what we got to do to fix it. I don't know if there's a actual solution. But any advice that we can give to former players or people that's aspiring to be an NFL player or entertainer or anybody that's coming into um, financial success, you know, if I had to, if you had to say, these are the things that you can do that can prevent those things. You know, what are some of the things that you would say or you would suggest to a player or a person that's coming into financial success? Uh, the first thing is representation. Like, so when I say that, your your agent, like those are really the people who guide you with your money, like coming into it. You're trusting them with your contract negotiations. But your agent is not your financial advisor. But that's what I'm saying. When you get a good agent, though, like they advise you in life in general. See, that's what made me, that's what got me my agent. That's how I picked them. My agent, like everybody else was calling, 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 calling. But when you show up to my mama house, hang out with me all day, hang out with me and my friends all day, like it showed me a different side of you. The relationship. The relationship. You know, there's a lot of guys that got representation and those stories aren't the best. So how can you... You have like, to vet these people. You have to ask questions. You have to, like... But everything is coming at you so fast. Like, how Like slow, how can you how can you vet these people? Slow down. So like, you're saying you need to take all this in. You're trying to make it in the NFL draft. You're trying to take on all this, this, this totally... This, this new world that you have. Nobody that's been there, done that. Like, how do you have time? And this person has multiple people that he's representing. We're not going to worry about multiple people. What we're going to do is we're going to worry about self. And you need to talk to this person, get to know this person. Like I'm saying, he is representing you on possible. He's the difference in between you getting millions of dollars or a couple hundred thousand. So why wouldn't you slow down and take time for that? You got to understand what they're doing for you and what their job is. That's the first thing I would do because they can, like, that's how I got my financial freedom, right? I spoke with my agent and I said, hey, man, if you could tell me one thing, about the NFL, 
what would you tell me? He said, leave the NFL debt free. He said, everything you own needs to be paid for when you leave the NFL. He said, you don't have to have $1 in your pocket. But as long as you have everything you leave with paid for, like you can pay bills anywhere. That's not that many people that's actually going to put the time in to do that. So how do you combat that? It's just, bro, it's like you got to have good people around you, man. Like, first, like most like anything else, it starts at home. If you come from a good family that understands financial freedom and things of that nature. But most players don't. Exactly. So, like, the the biggest thing is is that you're going to have to put yourself in in better situations. Like, and it's going to start with the people that are around you. You're going to have, you are the company you keep. So you have to be in a circle of people. First of all, you got to want to. First of all, you got to want to know what's what's next after football. Like a lot of people just live willy nilly just for football. Like get all the money, blow the money, we're going to get it again next year. Like that's just how a lot of people feel. But, and it's no discredit to them. It's because we've never been taught anything different. Like so people have to, like the NFL offers all this stuff, right? But it's not, it's not forced on us. They force them fines on us, right? All right. So they have to force these things on players also, but they have to know how to walk the fine line between the two, right? You got to make it interesting to football players because I was the guy who ain't want to hear nothing. Like I had a different take on that because like they had the Ricky Symposium, they had all these different financial programs, but within those programs, they pertain to that small percent that's getting the money. What about the guys that's making the minimum, the guys that's not really making the money? Usually you have to live in two cities, the way you come from, where you come from, and where you plan, mm -hmm. as you have divided amongst that, and most guys come from single parent homes. They have the whole town on their back. It's like when you start looking at the money, there's really no money left, and they got these programs that sit up and tell you what to do with your money, but there's no money there. You have to get with the right people, see what they're doing. Like you gotta want to more than anything, man. You know, it's we be all over the place. It's the party crew. It's the dinner crew. It's the boys who don't go nowhere. It's the boys who go everywhere. Like it's just like you gotta. How do you it. find it though? How do you, that like it finds you? I, like I I know what you're talking about. I'm saying for but for people that don't know or they haven't been in that world, how do you find it? You a kid that's coming from this small town in some state. You don't really know much. The people you looked up to once you you realize that I looked up to them, but they really didn't have much. Now I'm in a different world. Now you have all these newcomers and all these people around you that's saying, hey, you should do this, you should do that. How do you find that person? EJ, it's way harder to get there. I think it's harder to stay and keep than get there when you look back on it. Man, ain't no way. EJ, it's 2,500 people in the whole world. Okay, football, there's a pattern to get there. Okay, you go run this, you test out this, you do this in the game. There's a, there's a true pattern. There's, there, there's a blueprint, right? You mm -hmm. get there. But to stay there and to sustain, I think that's tougher. To, I think it's tougher to keep the money than to go get the money. Yeah, tell that to a guy who came from a six-round draft pick from Tus Tuskegee, uh, Alabama. You knew what it took to get there. But I was but just to keep to keep that money and to maintain all those years, that's tough. EJ, when I left after my first year, bro, I stayed in 308-B in Clement Street Projects, $27 a month. My first two years out the league with my homeboy. So we split it $13. But that's but that's but, but I'm saying, just, that, that's that goes just, back to the person. But that's just where I wanted to be at. I, my but sister, I'm saying, that's that goes back to the that's and that's why we're talking about the person, the mindset, because if you look at the whole, the, the numbers show that it's not easy to maintain. Because if it was easy to maintain, we wouldn't be at an 80-20. We wouldn't be in that situation. But, okay, you at an 80-20. That's perfect that you put the numbers involved. We're at an 80-20 with Stan. You at less than 1% at getting there. So which number is greater? But I'm saying to get there, you have to physically be a certain type. You have to have a certain thing. Like certain things to give. You couldn't be a person that's non-athletic and say, I'm going to get there. So you have to have the basis of those things. But to me personally, I say, okay, look, there's a blueprint. There's a guide. If you go out here and do these things right here, you can get there. But I don't think there's a true blueprint for the person just, to maintain. Just look at it like this, EJ. If you're a first, second, or third round draft pick, my boy, you damn near get to stay there just off that at least two years for sure. How do you get to become that 20% 20, 20 of a person or that group to 
I actually say, okay, I was there, I was there to maintain, and I, I got it all figured out. I think that's harder than getting there. I know it's tough to get there. I'm not going to never downplay the significance or how tough it is to be an NFL. Well, it might not have been tough for you because you went PWI, you're Edron James. Right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, like, it's not, it's not tough for you no, guys. But what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm really going at is, like, it's not so much as tough because this guy that's probably more talented than me and that had more opportunities than me. But what I'm saying is something within myself, something within yourself that separates the two. And that's, that's where, when I look at it, I say, man, it's something about the person because the odds are stacked against you. And when you start looking at it, you start saying, okay, look, the system is not to where it works in your favor. And the numbers actually back the claim. And so it's like, why? What's the difference? Like, what's the difference between a Frank Walker and another person? You went to a HBCU. And you had an agent that was able to sit with you and actually help you and guide you even on the financial part, which is, that's not the norm. You know, you get a few that you probably knew from a relationship or some personal situation. So what was it about your agent and what was the transition from the agent to the financial aspect that actually put you in the position or was it already in you from a mindset standpoint, from a hustler standpoint, because you're a natural hustler. So where did all that tie in together with the agent, the financial, and to help you make those right financial decisions? So with my agent, like what stood out to me is the fact that he came to my house, to my doorstep, sat with me, chilled with me, kicked it with me and my friends. He made it feel like a family environment. So that's what homie is. So when I see him represent big players like Bart Scott and all those players, and it makes me wonder, like, what did he see in me to want to come to my doorstep? And so for him to come to my doorstep and see me, it meant a lot more than a phone call that other agents made. So that right there showed me that he was as special as I am. Right. Like, he was willing to go the extra mile like I'm willing to go the extra mile. As so far, not, a, not all agents do that. Yeah, not all agents do that, you know, which is understood. You know, everybody has a, a different business model. Um, some people like to have those relationships with people who they do business with. Um, as far as, like, the financial aspect, like, they didn't hinder much financial advice. His biggest thing for me was, like, at the end of this, just leave debt free. Don't leave the NFL with house notes. Don't leave the NFL with car notes. Don't leave with any of those things right there. They gave you some good nuggets. Good to nuggets to take with me. And take with you. He didn't, on to he's your never. Next. They've never called me and say, "Hey, you should put money into this. You should put money into that." Um, that advice came from my stepfather. So what, like, with your stepfather? Your stepfather has a history of doing business, or what made you? Because we all grow up with people who we assume know what they're talking about. But when you enter the NFL world and you enter this money world, it's a, I, re, I found it's a totally different world. You know? And the people who I knew in the past, they knew nothing about these high numbers. So what gave you the confidence for, or the confidence in your stepfather to say, look, I'm going to follow his lead? Um, the way he took care of me, I wasn't his kid, right? So that right there, I, say, I keep telling you, you got to dig into character of people. Like, for someone to take on a family that's not his and provide for it like it is his, like, that right there tells you the type of person that they are. And even with him, like, he was the light man. Like, he was the city's light man. But he made good business decisions with his money. He bought houses. And so he just said, hey, Frank, you know, every time so he you kind get, of figured it out and just kind of put you on the game? Well, he just, he just introduced it to me. He said, hey, this is what I do. I get this money every month. Like when everything, when don't nothing else work out right, I know on the first or the fifth this money coming to me. And I just kind of like would have money sitting around and just be like, you know what, I'm going to go buy a house today. Call them, hey, man, let's go look at some houses. We go ride, look at a few houses, grab two, three here, two, three there, and just kind of went from there. And to this day, like those houses, do, I don't know where the money go. My mama, my mama don't let me. I ain't seen it since I had the houses. But I do know one thing, it ain't spent. Right, For sure, right. not dealing with my mom. It's not. Spending. You know, real estate one of the best, best investments. You know, all the time, man. For him to put you on that, but then now you go back to the NFL world. You know, where you're in the locker room and you're around the guys. You know, what made you stand tall and say, "Look, now nah, I'm just gonna do my thing over here," because I have that. But they have a professional 
because most of the guys they have these financial advisors that are these so-called professional college grads. But you got somebody over here that you trust. Like when you look at that right there, how did you, how did you even interact with players, or how did the conversations go when you're talking to another player that's they not they don't have a stepfather like you, and they're trying to say, hey Frank, I want to do business, I want to get into business. You know, how do you guide them? knowing that you're not taking the traditional business model. Now or then? Then, right then, because you, cause you was in the midst of it. You was in the fire. You, like, you put your money where your mouth was at. You just up there and said, look, I'm getting behind my stepfather and I'm, I'm following this blueprint. You know? And in every locker room, everybody started getting to that point. They say, hey, what's going on? They want to learn. They want to know about investing. And they usually have a financial advisor that kind of kind of steer them this way or that way. You're like... Where did the conversations go when it came to Frank Walker and a younger guy coming to him? So, hmm. man, it's kind of, so you know, like when you're not the highest up on the totem pole with money, like people don't really come to you for advice, for money advice. Like if I'm just being completely transparent with you, right. like people tend to come to me for other things, like what they saw on the outside. You know, like, but as far as advice goes, like, we had a few guys that I would interact with, and I would just tell them, man, you know, don't spend it. Like, until you figure it out, don't spend it. Like, that's the biggest thing. Hold on to all you can. Like, cash is king. Like, don't spend it. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. Like, intake more than you put out. Like, and, and that was the biggest thing I, I could pass on because you got to realize, like, I was from Tuskegee. All I knew is what I knew. Like, my my whole business model while I was playing football is gamble and beat these fools so I can go <laughs> buy some. I go buy me a house with it, like for real. Because you know how it is, people making, I'm in there, it's my my best bud was making a million dollars a week, a million and a half a week. So, you know, like one of the other guys lose 20, 30,000 a week, he don't care nothing about that. But for me, I get, extra, I get the extra dub, like I'm calling home, hey, any houses out there? Let's stack them up, stack them up. Like, so that was just, it was just the way I moved, like the way I maneuvered. Like, I wasn't never really, I wasn't never really caught up on the, I gotta have this, I gotta have that, because I got this, I got a mouthpiece. Like, the only reason you wanted all that other stuff is to, to you know, go chase the clubs or chase a little action, whatever you're trying to do. But, like, <clears throat> I can get that just by talking. Like, so I was cool on that part. So for me, I wasn't, like, I led the pack. Like, even when, when I was playing in New York, bro, like, you'll be amazed at how they let me maneuver around the city. I wasn't, I wasn't Will Peterson. I wasn't Will Allen. The boys making eight, nine million a year. I wasn't none of that. But when they came out, they had come with me. Because you're Frank and you got that. Well, it's just because I treat that, people that, right. That I treat people right. But that's, and that's, that's, that's the thing we look for. Like, when you talk about the creative life, you talk about somebody that's able to, you know, stand tall amongst everybody else oh, yeah, for because sure. it, it's something in you as a person, certain something in certain people that's able to be in those positions. And so for my thing is always trying to, you know, get a feel for, you know, how do he separate himself? What makes him different from the other guy? Because a lot of guys play ball, a lot of guys come up with money because you can see some guys with money, but they still can't maneuver. They still can't make things happen. So when I see somebody that's able to make plays or make things happen is something different about them. And those are things we look for. So. Yeah, so for me, like, how can I believe in EJ more than I believe in me? That's the dumbest shit ever if you ask me. So it says a belief in self. You got to believe in you. If you're going to bet on anybody, you bet on yourself. Because guess what? Like, EJ might be tired today and might not want to go. But I got to go. You see what I'm saying? So I'm betting on me. Like, that's the biggest thing, bet on yourself. Like, everybody say that. But nobody really do it. They always looking for somebody you else. Live it, man. Hey, I'm betting on me, and you know I'm betting on me, EJ. Yeah, we, we talk. We talk outside of this, like exactly. You know for sure I'm betting on me, and like if I say it's gonna work, I don't care how many times it. it it's not a failure until you quit on it. My shit gonna work. Yeah, you're, it's, gonna, it's, you're gonna go at it. I ain't gonna stop till but it works. And those are things you look for. So we talk about creative life. We talk about you know people that create their own path. People that actually see things and they actually do it, not just talk it because life, in life you got a bunch of followers. You got a lot of people, they, you know, they try to cheat and 
follow this person's blueprint. But you have those certain people that say, man, look, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to create my own way. That's always been my mindset, to create my own way. And it's worked for me, but some people it don't work for. And I see the same thing in yourself. You know, we run in the same circle at times, different circle at times, but everything runs parallel. And so when you see in people like that, those are the things you're looking for to kind of give the nuggets, to give people confidence to believe in themselves. Because I've noticed a lot of people don't believe in themselves. You know, they want to run with the pack. And when you see somebody like yourself doing that, you know, that's, that's something I got to always give you a flowers. I always got to tell you, hey, look, I like the way you're doing your thing. I like the way you're moving. Because it's separating you from the pack. You know, and then when you start getting into this and you start looking at, okay, you've been able to do these things to put you in a situation for your lifestyle, you know, and you, when we always talk about lifestyle leisure in the creative life, one of the creative life pillars. And for you, you know, you've created a lifestyle. And when I look at this lifestyle, I'm seeing somebody that's, hey, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. And so when you're telling somebody how to get there. That's the thing that we're looking for. So in order to elevate, I can 100% tell you you're going to have to separate. Like you're going to have to get away from some of the things, whether or not it's people, things, alcoholism, drugs. In order to elevate, it's mandatory you separate, even if it's just for yoga for you to think to yourself. You're going to have to separate. Like So I'm perfectly fine with being by myself. Me and my best friend lived in Atlanta 15, 20 years together. I promise you, we ain't rode to the club 10 times together, not in the same car, and we go to all the same places. It's okay to be by yourself. Like, it's okay to bet on yourself. It's okay to be one person. It's okay to be just Frank, not Frank and them, not Frank and the gang. Like, it's okay to be you. Like, just bet on yourself. Like, ain't don't nobody love me like me. <laughs> they say your mama love you. Yeah, I know mama love you, but like, I love me. Like. Like, I'm going to always, like, put my best foot forward for me more than I am going to do for anybody else. No, I like that. I think that's important. You know, you have to believe in yourself because you are who you got besides the people that got you. Besides the people that got you. I agree. You know, I like the bet on yourself, you know, mantra, you know, and that. But betting on yourself is all about winning. I see you, you've taken it to a whole nother level. You've actually created a brand and just call it winning. And, and when I look at like, I believe in manifestation. I believe in sitting up there seeing things before they actually happen. And when you talk about winning, you know, like, anytime somebody see you, you see a lot of confidence. Like, you're going to walk around with confidence. And that's one thing I notice about all winners. But you've taken to a level to where you say, look, I'm going to create a brand called winning. So tell me about this winning brand. I see the winning brand on. Yeah. Then we got the winning hats. You actually gave us some winning hats. So tell me about winning. So... It's as simple as what you just said. Like, you want to win at this podcast. You want to win at football. You want to win at life. It's the most relatable thing that I could think of for every single person in this world. You, can, I don't know not one person that doesn't want to win. And so, like, all I did was visualize it. And when you see this hat, like, even if you're reading it, it relates to you. Even if I'm wearing it, it relates to you. All right. It relates to me. Like, so that was the biggest thing. Like, it's the most common thing. Like, only thing I know is common is winning that I know every single person is going to have is trash. So, like, winning is not an option. It's the only option. And you want to do it in absolutely anything. I don't care if we're pitching coins. I don't care if we're going fishing. Like, you ain't even got to say it. But if I got four fish and you got three, I won. <laughs> like, like I, we ain't that's got to say a good, word. But that's a good mindset. Like I like I like the mindset because like like when that's think of creative life, it's the same thing. So like creative life, winning, they all run parallel because like you like it's like I'm talking to myself, you know, like I'm sitting up here betting on myself. When you talk about winning, they all run parallel because you're talking about you know, like this is me. I'm like, if I want something, I gotta create it. And I can't go out here and depend on nobody. I agree. And you're talking about winning, you're talking about Look, I don't care what it is I'm doing, man, I'm trying to beat you. I'm trying to win, I don't care right? what we're doing. I don't and care and what knowing we're you doing. personally, you know, you're always trying to win. For you sure. know? So that's where 
pretty cool about the whole thing. I think everybody should come up with their mantra or their saying that actually motivates them. Because when I see Creative Life, all I think about is self. I, I think about say, like we all watch the Create the Life movement. Like you've made it a big thing and a big brand, and like people are really trying to create new lifestyles behind just seeing you do that. And um, it's crazy because I remember us talking about it and it just being like on a sheet of paper. Right. Like I remember those days and to watch you manifest it into homecoming tours, um, car show tours, like you're creating a life around the things that you like to do. And I think it relates, like we said, winning, it yeah. relates to everybody. Yeah, but you, and, you, you wanted this to win. Right. You wanted, and you did, you, like we're doing a podcast right now. You want this podcast to win and it's winning. You've had some of the biggest NFL players to the biggest hustler NFL players, which is me. Like, the biggest hustler. Yeah, the biggest hustler. Winning. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to win. <laughs> like, you can, win. If, I'm, if you see me in there, boy, bet with me. I'm trying to win. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, but, but that's what I like, man. You know, that was dope. You know, everybody got to find their lane, find what drives them. And that's what I found that drove me. That's what drives you. And hopefully this podcast helped it hopefully it inspires somebody to drive them because it's all about what you do and how you do it. And for me, it's create the life. I try to create the life I want to live. I don't try to do what other people deem. But it does inspire good. people, though. Like, even though... That's the purpose. Yeah, I'm about to say, it inspires other people. You won't believe how many people call me, friend, boy, I seen you. See your boy EJ, he over here, he up. The boy, I got to get up. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's, but that's, EJ on boats and everything. Yeah, bro, he on but, everything. But that's what it's about because, like, like me, I try to take, I take the financials out of the picture. Like, what would you do if you didn't have no money? If I didn't have no money and I wanted, oh, oh, no, not no money. If I didn't have money issues, what would you do? You know, and that's where I look at create life. Like, I look at create life as what would I do if I didn't have this issue or that issue? I would be on the boat. I would be on the private plane. I would be flying here, flying there. And I think everybody can aspire to that. And no, we want to appreciate you for coming on Create a Life Podcast. Create a Life Times Winning. There's no way we can lose. You know, I got no, my boy Frank Walker. No way to lose. You know, man. this is one of the best stories that haven't been told because my boy got it out the mud from an HBCU and he represented that Tuskegee. T E U? You know, <laughs> you know they gonna. I thought it was H U. You know. Nah, nah, man. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I gotta look that one up, man. Yeah, I gotta yeah. look that one up. But yeah, I wanna appreciate you coming on, man. And this right here is just the beginning because because we do business together, we're gonna actually take this thing to another level and bring in some of our business ventures and put them right on this show. And we're gonna give a chance. We're gonna give people a chance to highlight what they're doing, and within what they're doing, hopefully, it aspire or inspire somebody to actually do something greater than what they're doing themselves. For sure.